remind everybody of exactly what is going on, uh, who is who is playing and what we're here for. So check this one out, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Game for Glory. Dot net show match. If you guys go check out the webpage gameforglory.net, you can see the portal. It is a competitive event host that is designed around giving you uh, the ability to win money playing the games that you love. You challenge other players of similar skill level, of similar ability, and the entire game is going to be uh, um, uh, played and watched and, and reviewed by official marshals. Uh, shout out to Mr. Odendal if you're watching. He is, of course, one of the epic, epic members over at GameForGlory.net. And yeah, guys, when you play out, you play your match to see who the winner is going to be in whatever game you prefer, and you actually win real hard cash. You win the money. You actually want to go into, you know, challenge. Winner takes all. So let's see what happens. We are actually going live, so I'll jump back onto the webpage in just a moment. But once again, let's give a quick shout out to the challengers. AFOB, Ferrarist, Fokker, Digayo, and Icematics. They are challenging Fnatic Cyanide, HXD, N-rated, Soez, and Xpeke. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live in game number two. This is Bands and Picks. Fnatic had a little bit of a ruffle stomp in the previous match. From what I understand, they decided to pick random champions, number one. So they went into the game with a random selection of champions, and in addition to that, they used some pretty, pretty interesting uh, summoner spells as well. We had Brand in the mid lane rocking Promote. We had, um, uh, uh, let me think, Cleanse on Corky. Not too unusual, but Cleanse Ignite as opposed to Flash. We had Ghosts across the board. Tarek in the jungle. So interesting, interesting collections. But look at what we've got banned from Fnatic. Dr. Mundo, Garen, and Heimerdinger. So champions that we don't usually see. But it does mean that Ezreal is open and available. And Ezreal has now been selected. Now, uh, somebody in chat help me out really, really quickly. Um, Ezreal, I don't know if the patch is in, is in effect right now where they remove the attack speed debuff from Essence Flux. Is that live or is that on the next patch? Unfortunately, I've been away for a week, so I'm not 100% clued up. On the flip side, we see Wukong has been locked in, as has Fizz. So this is going to be fun. All right, awesome. So it's for the next patch. Huge props to everybody in chat that's saying that. No? Tenchev, Olibarrel, Dark Certus, X Naki. Um, it's awesome, it's awesome. And let's have a look how this one's going to play out because we do see a Zerath potentially being locked in with Mage Chains and the huge, huge, huge rain range on that Arcano Pulse. It is immense. The problem is if they're going to be playing, you know, Fizz in the middle, versus Zerath, that's going to play into their favor. The thing is now, look at this, all right? Fnatic of random. From from what I'm led to believe, they, they, they are locking in, you know, random champions, and I see Soez is locked, so we've got Wukong, Fizz, Vigar, and Warwick. All right, locked in and secured for the Fnatic roster. They have no ranged AD carry right now. Whether or not this, this team composition is going to play off, I mean, if you think about it, you've got great AoE that you can put down from Cham the Waters, from um, the, the Cyclone of Wukong, from the Event Horizon of Vigar. It's going to lock people in place, knock them up in the air a couple of times, and deal some really, really good damage. So I like what I'm seeing. And of course, Warwick can jump into somebody for the suppression as well, add into conjunction with his uh, uh, on the hunt or the. the Scent ability of his where he can chasing, that's definitely going to help them out. On the flip side, Sona and Diana most likely being locked in. So my assumption is that we're going to see Diana in the jungle, uh, Jax in the top lane. It is possible that we're going to see Jax in the top, uh, uh, Jax in the jungle and Diana middle zero at top, but I don't think that's likely. I don't think that's 100% likely. So most, you know, we'll see an interesting one. Oh, but we do have a Soraka. Now this is going to play into the favor of Fnatic, having that ability, the the heal, the uh, you know the mana from Infuse, as well as the silence, and knowing that we're most likely going to see an AP aggressive Soraka, it's going to be a fun composition. You know, Event Horizon goes down, Starkle, Starkle, Starkle. Chum the Waters knocks everybody up. Wukong's going to dive in there with his ultimate as well, and you know what? It's 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 going to be interesting. That is for sure. 
Norkong, another champion I haven't played inside. It's a Cyclone. I don't know why I keep getting confused. It was Cyclone. I doubted myself, and because I doubted myself, I didn't say it. But, on the flip side, if Sona gets a good crescendo, if we get a nice crescendo across them, you can blow up Vygot, you can blow up Fizz, and you can blow up Soraka very, very quickly. The only thing is, Zerath and Diana are both just going to get deleted from Vygar. He's just going to go, you know, QWR, and if he's held in place or silence for any length of time, that's it. You know, done. Done, done, done. So, let's have a look at these runes. I'm going to look at the Fnatic members because they're quite interesting. Cyanide usually plays jungle. This time around has gone teleport and I believe promote on his Wukong, so we're most likely going to see him in a lane. Mastery's page, 2109 in terms of mastery. Very aggressive, as well as move speed and just flat physical damage. The jungler, according to what I'm seeing at the moment, is now HXD with Smite, and Rated with Smite, so as with Smite, as well as Clarity. And I'm getting a couple of messages really quickly. Let's see uh, how this one works out. So, so as on his Warwick, we'll see who's who's playing where. Uh, 9021. Uh, opting to go for the points into utility, just getting the cooldown reduction as well as the mana, etc, etc. 4.5 move speed, MR armor, and magic penetration, so really trying to get as much out of that hungering strike as possible at the early levels. And Rated is playing Vygar, teleport Smite, so I'm going to be using Smite, which is interesting, because you sort of want to use you know, his Q to uh, pick up as much farm as possible, I believe it's Baleful Strike, 9.15.6 on his mastery page, runes, 2.7 MR, 4.5 move speed, armor, magic resist, magic pen. So AP tanky, which is interesting on Vigo because he is an incredibly, incredibly squishy champion. HXD opting to use Ghost and Smite on his Fizz. 2901. All right, so look at that. 2901. Harry is going balls deep in this game. Rune page one. Ability power, physical damage, armor, and ability power level 18. So it's an incredibly, incredibly aggressive fizz. Let's have a quick look over at uh, Diana, because of course, Icematics, or Diana, um, I've heard a few people yelling at me, it's Diana, it's Diana. Let's see how he's doing. 2109 on his runes. Ability power, attack speed, magic penetration, and some HP. So uh, a fairly strange combination of runes. Um, I'm not sure if that's intentional or maybe not having uh, the full combination that you'd like. Mr. Fokker, who has been very, very loud in chat. He is playing Ezreal this game. Most played champions are Lux, Sona, and Wukong, apparently, according to what I'm looking at. But that might be season one um, ranked. 26-4-0 on his edge, also often to go for some very aggressive things, uh, you know, stats, especially the tower challenging ones, so um, I'd like to see how this one plays out. I like the name of his ranked team, the Fat Belly Unicorns. 4.6% attack speed, 18 physical damage, and only 2.8 armor. You almost wonder why would it be there. You know, it's such a small number, I really don't think it's, it's that important. And interestingly, we are seeing a Jax jungle, so it's going to be double AP. Diana most likely going to go top, I would assume, but she could quite, you know, just as easily go middle. And it's going to be Zerath in the opposing lane, and also another very, very interesting rune page. So, champion game is now loading up. I'm going to try not blind everybody, if I can, but I think I may have just freaked it out. So we're going to pull the, the portal back up. Once again, guys, gameforglory.net. Go check the portal out. You can challenge anybody else that uh, is on the portal, anybody else that's playing, and you guys actually stand a chance to win real money. The thing that I love is this particular statement here. A game-specific trained marshal will be overviewing and monitoring the game, so the real winner is always, always found. So I really like that. Unfortunately, my loading screen has freaked out once. This happens from time to time, uh, and it appears my alt and enter is not giving me full screen. So we will get this uh, up and running in just a second as soon as the game actually loads up. But uh, yeah, I can't get it to, <laughs> to full screen right now. Everybody that's joined in, thanks for stopping by. I'm looking at chat, all right? While I'm uh, waiting for the game lobby to actually fill up, I've got my eye over on chat. So I want to know, who do you think is going to win? Will we see another troll team from Fnatic picking up the victory? Or do you believe that the opponents, the average Joes this time round, actually, you know, stand a chance? They've got the more standard composition, they've got the double AP burst, 
etc etc uh, also while we are waiting take a look at the pro players that are still coming up the pro player matches that are still around the corner Pajira 19th Dara McTie, Elemental Cutie, as well as White Ra in the relative games. If you know anybody that plays these matches or plays these games or, you know, takes the competitive scene seriously, tell them to check it out. It's a really, really cool portal. So, let's see what's happening over on my game because it appears to be freaking out. What I think I might do, there we go. We are in! Great, great, great. So, I do apologize about that little mix-up. It's just a little graphical thing which I have now resolved. Come on. I'm just keeping my eye on the stream. The mouse is there. So let's pull up in-game overlays, get this up and running, and yay! We are finally there. So I do apologize guys. I have absolutely no idea why that was freaking out, but we are up, we are running, we are now working, and we have a five-man invade from Fnatic Raid Call, moving all the way through to the top lane. We're going to switch over to the vision of the average Joes. You can see that dark matter being dropped from up high. Vargas is going to see what he can see. What we can do. He snuck into this top lane. We're looking at the team-specific vision. All right, team-specific vision. All right. And you can hear the laugh from Vigo coming out. Neither team know where they are. We've had absolutely no vision from everybody. But the thing that I'm a little nervous about is that Enrated has decided to go for Dark Matter over his Event Horizon. And that Event Horizon at level 1 would have been so, so strong if he could have uh, held somebody in place. Let's take a look at the pings right now. And I'm just going to keep cycling between the team vision. Average Joes, all five of them have snuck together here. AFOB has already put a point into Counter-Strike. So he's gone very, very early for that ability. It is, of course, going to help him out against those jungle creeps. Avoiding all of the auto attacks, mitigating the damage, and then returning a higher percentage of damage back based on the number of dodges applied. But what I'd like to point out already, outside of the obvious invade from Fnatic, is that we've got two Doran's Rings. Diana with a Doran's Ring, as well as... And Doran's ring over on Zerath, and look at the smites now from Fnatic. They've gone out, we see a smite has already been used from Soaz. They're gonna take that full top lane of experience. They've pulled the blue buff, and we may actually see going down. Take a look at the damage there from the Hem of Valor. Gonna carry on chasing, but Vygar just manages to steal that blue buff away. And they're just gonna try push down this, this level one tower. Now this is the strat that we've seen a little while ago where you would jump up into the top lane, you would actually teleport to a minion that takes tower aggro to keep it alive. But the members of Average Joes, they've fought them back, they've pushed them out of the lane. And Fnatic are now teleporting, so Cyanide, he's moved all the way down to the bottom lane. We're going to stick with the team at the moment, and Rated is now using his teleport. And just turn directed camera off and jump back onto Manoral. And that's going to be a Wukong. And a Vigor on the bottom lane. Counter Strike is available. IFOB cannot get in range though. And if he could have held HXD in place, that could have been first blood. But instead, Average Doe's now falling back, and Cyanide and Enrate are just chunking down this bottom lane tower. So, a pretty interesting start. And this definitely plays into Fnatic's favor because, of course, they've got all the. You know, they've got all the, the experience, all the knowledge, all the calling. You know, when a member of Fnatic says, look, let's push middle, or let's push bottom, four out of the five members, you know, are core here. HXD is, of course, the manager, so he's been with the team. He's watched them play. He's most likely subbed for them multiple times. And you can see here, three members of Fnatic pushing this top lane down. That promote is up and available. HXD has used his ghost. He's going to carry on chasing. He uses the... That uh, three trident strike continues dealing damage down. Urchin strike, rather. Chunks him down a little bit in the bottom lane. Wukong goes very, very low. 80 hit points, taking a lot of DPS from the tower as well as from the creeps. But that's two towers within four minutes from a three man top and a two man bottom. We do see a counter strike. That's going to hold Pekka in place. Flash forward for Oris. He's going to be able to pick up first blood. Now they turn their attention over to Soaz. He's got that healing passive up. It's generating about 45 hit points per attack. He's going to give away yet another kill. So it's one to Zerath, one to Jax. But when you consider that the team has picked up two towers already, it plays into their favor so much. And unfortunately, we have yet another disconnect. Degao, who has been played by Sona, 
and vice versa rather, he is playing Sona, has disconnected from the game, we can only hope he'll be able to reconnect quickly. Fnatic currently 800 gold up, two towers and there we go, that's what I like to see, Sona is back in the game, Sona is available. But the thing that I like about this particular strategy is that you know, it actually demonstrates to League of Legends that there are alternatives. If you do a three-man or a four-man push, there's actually the possibility of taking down a super, super early tower. You know, everybody gets that 200 odd gold. Everybody gets the ability to pick up that first item sooner or pick up a whole bunch of wards. So I'd love to see more stuff like this in actual um, uh, professional play. Ferraris is playing so, so carefully. He's got no you know, flash, nor does he have any boots. He's just going to get caught out so much. There comes the Brutal Strike. Cyanide manages to use the decoy to get to safety. Exhaust is out. Peke is going to carry on chasing the Star Call. Cyanide picks up the kill on the back of a very cheeky Fizz. Dies forward. He's going to have that damage ticking away, but it's not going to be enough. He hits a tower hit for his troubles. And Fnatic, they're just dodging this damage beautifully. Ferraris once again hanging around. He needs to go back. HXD picks it up. And... I can only assume that Zerath was looking at the shop. Icematic has now jumped in. He's managed to use as much damage as possible, but he's out of mana. Crescent Strike is now available. It's not going to be enough. He's sticking around, and he's got to be careful because Fnatic are going to go for this kill if they can. Pale Cascade's not available. Nor is his Moonfall, but now Fokker's rejoined. He's going to carry on chasing a very, very nice Mystic Shot into Flash, into Auto Attack. He picks up a nice kill. Now with Fokker in the, in the match, if they can keep him alive, he's got the ranged ability to deal damage. A heal comes up from Pekka. Counter Strike locks up three members. Event Rise is going to prevent them from the chase, but Sunrise gets one more Hungering Strike off. And with Fokker in a team fight, he's going to be able to turn the tide. He's going to be able to put damage down from range, you know, without reply. He's got the Arcane Shift that he can get over or through the Event Horizon if it goes down. You know, get away from Fizz if Fizz jumps onto him. The only thing that's scary, the, oh look at that, that's not going to help. You can't jump into an Event Horizon like that. You really need to be very careful of that. But the thing is, once uh, Soaz gets his Infinite Duress up, he's just going to jump onto it. You know, Infinite Duress onto Ezreal, blow Ezreal up, and then just, you know, focus on the rest of the Squishies. Sign is now chasing onto Ice Matics. Ice Matics get that Pale Cascade Shield, but it's immediately blown up. Berserkers Greaves. And actually appears that Harry has now actually disconnected from the match. So HXD, the team manager, is no longer there. But Fnatic find themselves three towers up, two and a half thousand gold. AFOB chasing down Soez. Soez is just ignoring him completely. He is going to go down. In the top lane, Cyanide was looking for a kill, but it wasn't going to be enough. And in the middle lane, an Event Horizon goes down. That's going to be enough to put some DPS to go. And now, he's putting him down, but look at this. Fokker, he's come in. He's not going to be able to pick up the kill credit. As Sona actually does it with the power cord. Vigor does get the tower, but very, very unfortunately, Sona grabs both of those kills. Sona grabbing them. You know what? Fnatic will be happy with that. They'll be saying, you know what? We do not mind because... If Ezreal got the kills, he would have been the scary one. I have no idea how to arrange these champions, so I'm just going to move Jax down and have the double APs on top. Let's have them sitting with their respective APs. Uh, the AD in what is equivalent of the support from Fnatic. I don't know how to tidy up this scoreboard. It is a little bit strange. Ferrarist finally got those boots in hand, moving towards his Arcane Barrage. Once he gets the Arcane Barrage, he's going to be able to you know, lock himself down with those Mage Chains. Uh, Locus of Power. Put himself in place. Get all the range for his Arcane Pulse and for that uh, uh, Arcane Barrage. And just jump on everybody. So, uh, I like to see how that's uh, going to play into his favor. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at the items. So, Warwick and Wukong both going Riggle's Lanterns. They're going to be using those free wards as well as all of the procs onto the buffs, you know, doing the best they can to steal away as many minions as they can, as many creep farms. Peke eats a red buff and some stuns for his troubles. Gets blown up from one more auto attack on a 401 Jax. You gotta think, maybe, 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 you know, if Ezreal and Jax stay alive, if Ezreal and Jax can keep themselves in the game, it'll play into their favor. And somebody also just pointed out in chat, which I did actually miss, Soraka is going AD. Soaz is now jumping onto Fokka. Hungering Strike goes out. He's going to carry on chasing True Shot Barrage. Infinite Duress comes out. That's going to be healing him. Heal has been done in reply. Soaz has done this beautifully. Dodges away from the Mystic Shot. While that's happening, there's a huge engagement in the middle lane as Jax picks up another kill onto HXD. You know, so being pl who's playing Fizz. 
and Rated manages to get away with his life, but Soaz is still dueling here. He's got that Wriggles, he's got all the sustain from the on hit as well as from his passive. In the middle lane, Peke and Enrate are trying to go. Missile Barrage 1 and 2. AFOB is trying to get in range for a Leaf Strike. Can he do it though? It doesn't look like it. One more Missile or Arcane Barrage goes up, but look at the stun plus in power. Peke has taken so much damage, but Soraka is going to be able to pick one out. Going to carry on chasing. That's an AD Soraka. Now look at that. The stun goes down. That's going to be able to pick up another kill. That's double for Soraka. And potentially Vigo going to close this out. Can he get in range? That's the question. 12,600 gold. In the bottom lane, Soaz and Fokker are still going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm going to call him F from now on. Soaz and F, because I feel like I'm swearing and I feel a little bit rude. So, Soaz hanging around. He's got that clarity available. Cyanide forced up this top lane. And he's going to be careful. There we go. There's what I was looking for. Nimbus Strike into the auto attack. Cyclone is available. So he's most likely going to throw that out very, very shortly. Once he does, Vigo should be able to blow somebody out. There comes the Cyclone, that's all three members knocked up. Cyanide's going to get away. Now they're going to send their attention to Enrated. And it's just a little bit of a, a weird game to be casting. A little bit of a strange one. So as he's in range for that Blood Scent, he's going to stick around. Now he's going to carry on chasing. Blood Scent is up. HXD's going to dive forward. He uses that hop ability of his, jumping forward. Playful Trickster flashes forward. A little damage over time is going to be enough. And unfortunately, the Urchin Strike was too high, but uh, Sona does actually pick up the kill onto him because Sona is, of course, playing for the average Joes. Soez is now tanking Sona's damage all day long, continues attacking. In the middle lane, we see yet another kill as this x goes down, and I don't know where to keep my eyes because this is an incredibly strange fight. Soez just gives away a kill, decides it's quicker to just die than it is to recall. And Ops to do that. Ops to give away the free kill to Sona, who is currently 4-2-6. A 4-2-6 right now. And let's see. Soraka, Berserker's Greaves, Riggle's Lantern. We see a Riggle's Lantern for Wukong, a Riggle's Lantern for Warwick. Number Strike, Crushing Blow, continues attacking. Look at the exchange there. But now with the Leap Strike and the Counter Strike, that's going to stun side up. He's going to carry on chasing. He may actually have enough damage to pick up the kill, but with no red buff, it's not going to be enough, and F manages to close that one out with the assist of the rest of his team. And Rated is now hiding in the bushes and sets up the vision. They don't know he's there. And switch over to N Rated's vision. He can see them nice and clearly. He's going to be moving forward. Event Horizon comes down, lands the Dark Matter. Baleful Strike is going to carry on chasing, but Icematic pops up that Pale Cascade. He needs to hit a Crescent Strike, then into the Lunar Rush to really set something up. Crescendo comes up, that's going to put Enrated and Peke. Beautiful Crescent into Lunar Rush. Now with the Arcane Barrage, can they put the damage down? Soaz is going to be able to maybe get away with his life. He manages to jump onto Zerath before Stun goes down. F comes into the fight, and with all the damage he's putting down, the Average Joes may be able to close this one out. An aggressive Arcane Shift forward. Look at the range on that Arcane Pulse. It's immense. Another very good uh, Mystic Shot from F. He's going to continue chasing. True Shot Barrage goes up, and Enrated jukes it. He steps to the left. Lucky Leprechaun Vigor with a pot of gold steps over the rainbow. Doesn't manage to taste it, but Cyanide, he's now joined the party. Crushing blow out. Three members go down. Cyclone is up. He's taken a lot of damage. Will he be able to close out? No. Sony gets away with her life. Now F turns his attention back onto the Leprechaun. The pot of gold's not there anymore. Now he's going to go down. Mystic shot through the wall. I don't think there was a Phage Brock, so he's going to be able to be closed out. He's trying to find Sona. But fairly well done by the average Joes. That's a 9-1-5 Jax. He's starting to get very, very scary. Let's have a quick look at the player chat and see how they're feeling right now. Warmog's Vigar 2 OP from Fokker, apparently. It did take a very, very long time to kill him. BF Sword picked up by Wukong. We see an attack speed dagger as well as a cloth armor for Soraka. Take a look at Dem Bananas. 93 attack damage. Continues pushing, continues fighting. They pick up the Drake with all those wriggles and all those smites. You would expect them to have control of it, but they've only got a 3,000 gold advantage. Only got a 3,000 gold advantage. So my, my question here is, if the average Joes can stall or get this gold even, do they actually stand a chance to pull this back? People in chat, share your opinion with me. Oh, look at that. Mystic shot through the wall once again. 
Fokker has been on call with his aim, but he's opted to go for Sheen first instead of Phage. And it would, oh, very aggressive from Jax. He's dying forward in power plus all his auto attacks. Is the red buff going to be enough? No. He's now eaten an event horizon for his troubles. Puts a Grandmaster Might out. And Chumba Watcher just misses. HXD throws out that land shock. The Om Nom Nom. Cyanide is now going to try to juke this one. He's going to take the tower down. Actually, the tower will just barely survive. Before finally going down to the promoted cannon creep in the background. Which are incredibly powerful, by the way. Pings onto Baron. So this is going to be a 15 minute Baron. You'll see it spawn and the moment it spawns, Fnatic are going to chase that one down. But according to chat, Average Joe's win if they can keep this one up. Average Joe's win. So we'll see whether or not a composition and having an AD carry is going to play into it. 20 to 10 up. 10 kill advantage. But even with a 10 kill advantage, uh, they're 3,000 gold behind and this Baron is just going to play into their favor. First tower of the game is finally going to fall for the average Joes, but at what cost? They've lost seven. They've lost Baron Nasher. They're four thousand gold behind. And now we're going to see Fnatic probably collapsing around them. I must admit, it's a bit weird hearing the voice prompts again. It has been a while since I've had uh, the announcer on my game, but now that we're hearing it, look at the Fnatic members. They have decided to just push. All right, you got. Soraka and Warwick. Wukong has now finished up his Bloodthirster. I believe we're going to see a Madrid's Blood Razor coming out of Warwick. Top lane inhibitor is exposed, so this is going to be one dead inhib. Those bananas coming out are so, so strong from Soraka at the moment. Over 119 auto attack damage. Jax has come in. True Shop Roach goes down. Arcane Barrage, that's one down. Peke has just decided to commit to this tower. While every member of Average Joe's is stuck onto him, it's allowed Cyanide all the time in the world to chase down this tower. Decoy goes out, lies him a little bit of time. He does pick up the tower. And Sona, yet again with another kill. 5 2 8 on the kill stealing Sona. But Fnatic. They're playing, they're playing a push strat. They're playing a game where they just want to chase, chase, chase. And with Harry disconnected, could this play into their favor? Even though they've got the exposed inhibitors, Vygot chased forward. He wants this inhib, and he is going to get it. 630 HP, 500. Actually, maybe he won't. It's very, very low. Going to carry on chasing. 396, 323, 250, 199. Event Horizon is going to come down. He's managed to stun them. 89, 97. He's no, he is going to get it. One more to attack. Before he goes down, who's going to get the kill credit though? And it does in fact go to Farka. The man with the very rude nickname. But nonetheless, he's pulled every single member of the Average Joe's back. Okay, He's forced them to come to him. He's delayed them pushing out. He's delayed them picking up any more towers. And he's picked up an inhibitor. So even though it's, uh, uh, you know, it's feeding a kill, all of the advantages play into his favor. All right, let's take stock of the items really, really quickly. A banana throwing zeal wielding Soraka. Once again, still has that cloth armor and the dagger in hand. Zeal being worked towards for Wukong. Ionic Spark has been picked up for uh, Warwick, so he opted to get that recurve bow into the Spark. And look at the speed that's coming out. Plus 20 out on each of those attacks. His passive is really helping him out. He does actually opt to use the infinite duress immediately. Arcane Barrage comes down. Second proc misses. Arcane Impulse goes out, third Arcane Barrage finally, another Arcane Impulse actually catches. Ice Matrix was thinking about trying to get up there, but unfortunately did not land the Crescent Strike. So it couldn't dive in with the Lunar Rush. Or it could have, but decided not to. In the middle lane, Wukong uses his Cyclone. Fokker's picked up one, now he's turned his attention to Cyanide. Can Cyanide pick up the kill though? True Shot Barrage goes out. Cyanide's going to carry on chasing. Bloodthirst are just too strong. Finally the Crescendo comes out, and to Gaia, that Crescendo was way too late. You needed it earlier. HXD joins the party late, but unfortunately his giant land shock was not powerful enough. And the split pushing power that Warwick with his Ionic Spark and Vygot with his Dark Matter is just too, too powerful. Look how quickly he's killing these waves. Even if it's not a straight up wave clear with a single spell, it is enough to chunk them down so his wave continues pushing naturally. So he's going to carry on chasing. It's not followed up with the Lunar Rush. 
And Raiders looking for this kill here. Baleful Strike plus Primordial Burst may be enough. Does he have it available? No, has already been used. Jukes 1, Jukes 2, the third one hits. Ignite is down. Dagario walks into it. You can't walk into an ability like that now with the teleport going down. Cyanide dives forward. He uses his Nimbus Strike into Crushing Blow. That picks up one. Now he turns his attention to Ferrarist. And that's a teleport double kill. Soares is going to be the next one to fall on the back of a Diana Luna Rush. And now Cyanide is the man that's in trouble. He's going to carry on chasing down before AFOB goes godlike. That is a godlike Jax 12 1 10. And members of Game for Glory, the beginning of this game, the beginning of this game, there was a statement that said if a player or a team puts in an outstanding performance, maybe they deserve to grab a prize. I have to give mention to both Fokker and to AFOP, who have done very, very well. Take a look at the damage now onto AFOP. He may. No, I don't think he's going to be able to get away with this life. Grandmas, he manages to pick up one. He's going to turn his attention to Xpeka now. Pekka with the Phantom Dancer. AFOB, I, I'm sorry I doubted you, man. I am sorry I doubted you. Face first into two members of Fnatic Raid Call and gets away with the double kill. Such great play. Fokker's been on call with his Mystic Shots and his aim. He's been doing very well. But AFOB, the man of the match thus far, only sitting on 9,000 gold, the highest in the game, the highest in the match, and definitely been doing very, very well. What do you guys think of this Jax, ladies and gentlemen? It's, it's very, very powerful. So let's flick back over to the items. Trinity Force completed. Soez is now going to go toe to toe. He wants a charge. We'll see whether or not this is going to play out. Counter Strike is out dodging all of those auto attacks. Infinite Duress is going to hold him in play. This is going to be the second death. Now that the Cyclone's up, Cyanide's going to carry on pushing. Soez is focusing Diana as quickly as possible. Now that was a beautiful crescendo. Well done, Sona. Locking up members of the enemy team, securing your team a double kill. Only losing Jax in the process. That was well placed, well timed ultimate. It saved Diana, but in rated, he wants a kill. He does get the Inventor Rise and Dark Mantle plus Baleful Strike goes down. I think he used his Primordial Boost as well. That was definitely a, a bit of an overkill, but nonetheless, he wanted it. Fizz is now chasing for the fight. There comes the Baleful Strike. Misses, uh, the uh, Dark Matter misses. Playful you know, Trickster is going to be jumping out. Now HXD is very, very low, but in rated with a double buff. The red buff slow as well as a stun from Event Horizon. He's just going to carry on chasing. Putting down as much as he can, but Fokker's jumped forward. Look at this. Degayo is going to be trying to get in there. If he can get in range for a Hema Valor, it may have been enough. But has he stalled enough for an Enrated? No. There comes the leak strike. Counter strike has been wasted, though. Degayo is going to carry on chasing. Enrated is most likely going to give away this double buff, but who's going to be the lucky member of the average Joes to pick it up? It is going to be Jackson. That's scary. Yet another double kill. 16 to 11. Vigar opting to go for a thorn male. A thorn male Vigar. Have you ever? Alright, let's have a look at the rest of these items. Sheen, KG's lucky pick, triple Dorns on Fizz. Ionic Spark, as well as a Kindle Gem and another Ruby Crystal on Warwick. Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster on Wukong. And what appears to be a Phantom Dancer, Wriggles, and potentially another Zeal. Fokker's going to carry on chasing. Phage Prox are down. Soaz is in a lot of trouble. Arcane Shift forward and a point blank Mystic Shot once again. I must say, Fokker's positional play with Ezreal has been very, very good. Ghost comes out from AFOB. Counter Strike is charged. He's going to be chunking down the decoy, but he's figured it out by now. He still has that Leaf Strike available if he can get into range. But this is the question. Cyanide is very, very quick. Manages to get away to safety. Ferraris misses the Arcano Pulse. But the average Joes have closed up the, the gold graph. Counter Strike goes out and look at the damage now onto Cyanide. AFOP continues pushing down. In the bottom, we do see Vikos or uh, a kill has been picked up. Jax has got one. That was one versus two. He's stuck in. He's committed to this. He's going to get a double kill. He's committed. He's going to carry on chasing before getting shut down by Cyanide. But that was one versus three, and he picks up the double kill. Now we're going to see whether or not Cyanide can clean house. Infinite Duress is out. Crescent Strike, Lunar Rush, Crescendo is going to stock them out. There comes the Moonfall. Going to carry on chasing. Cyanide's picked up one. It's tugged backwards. Decoys up for a couple more seconds. The Bloodthirster heal is so high. Can he get Sona? The red double buff is on him. But yet another double kill. This time into the hands of Diana. And Fnatic are just feeding kills to the average Joes. Feeding, feeding, feeding. I have to tell you now, the damage that is coming down from Jax is immense. Those empowered hits are just melting through the members of Fnatic. Where is Soraka? I want to watch Peke. 
because Peki has got 108 attack damage, a 1.4 auto attack speed ratio, and he's opted to go for a full banana throwing Soraka. Jax has now finished his Warmog, so Warmog's in Trinity Force completed. Once he starts working towards that Gunblade, it's going to be even scarier. But so far, definitely man of the match, as far as the average shows are concerned. But I do still feel that Fokker has been doing very, very well. Sony's been doing great at maybe nicking a couple of kills here on that 6-3-24. But you know what, when Fnatic are throwing them out so openly, you cannot blame to go up. And he's had some fantastic crescendos as well. Some really, really great crescendos. Another Baron goes the way of Fnatic, but they were behind on gold because of all the kills and all the farm that they've been picking up. So this is going to carry on chasing. Infinite Duress comes out. It may end badly though because AFOB has now jumped forward. So as maybe the first one to fall from Fnatic. We're going to stick with AFOB as he is the man of the moment. He's picked up one. Diana picks up one on the bottom. Cyanide has managed to sneak in an inhib from behind. And you've got to feel now, Fnatic, they know they're on the back foot. They know that they're behind. We're going to stick with Jax as he tries to jump in. Counter-Strike goes out. He's going to stun in Raider. The stun is beautiful. Leaf Strike plus Empower. Grandmaster's Might is active. He's going to carry on. Or oh, not just yet, actually. Going to stick to him as best as he can. The Phage Brock. And Raider is just juking all day long. Wukong, being played by Cyanide, does get taken out in the bottom lane. Yet another stun goes out. AFOB is just chasing, chasing. And amazing how much damage he has against Sun Champions but against a Thornmail Warmog's Vigar. That was a very, very long fight. And if Jax is not able to blow somebody up immediately, is he going to fall off? That's the question. Is he going to dissipate the longer this game goes? From what I understand, uh, from what I remember, a whole number of games, if you've lost two or more inhibitors, don't come back. Infinite Jurez goes out from Soaz, but this is just going to cost him his life. He'd hoped to jump onto Jax underneath the tower and get all the damage from the tower, but it just did not play out. And right now, AFOB is leading the charge. They're forcing down a Fnatic inhibitor. Tell you something, this is going to give the average Joes one hell of a lot of hope if they can get this inhibitor down. Whether or not it's actually going to pick up a win, that's the question. A leap strike forward, counter strike goes up, but it's not enough. AFOB is going toe to toe with Cyanide. He may not be able to win this one. Cyclone comes up. He is going to be able to pick up that kill, so he's now forced backwards, trying to get away. Crescendo comes up. So beautiful from Tagoa, immediately saving AFOB's life. That was immense, and I tell you something now, this team deserves prizes. Fizz has now been blown up. They've turned their attention to Enrated. He's managed to get a great event horizon down, but AFOB wants blood. Oh, beautiful Akano Pulse. Absolutely everybody's chiming in here. Fokka is now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the AD Soraka. He misses a Mystic Shot for the first time in 25 minutes. Can he pick up this victory though? AD Soraka is not necessarily the best. Essence Flux goes down. So that Essence Flux is going to debuff the attack speed. Arcane Shift. Mystic Shot. One more auto attack. Fokka may go down to minions. He's tanking minions. 30 HP. Still healing. Will it be enough? He's managed to survive just enough. I cannot believe that. AFOB is now the next one to jump away. Puts a ward down. Leap strikes to the ward for range. Soaz is now going to go be able to most likely pick up this kill onto Ferrarist. He's going to be able to put a stun down, apply a little bit of slows, but with that blood slant, it may not be enough. Counter Strike is up. Soros is going to carry on chasing. Leap Strikes forward. Arcana Pulse. The stun lands. That was huge. Ferrarist is going to carry on poking. I cannot get over the plays this team is doing. Fnatic are over committing, and the average Joes are holding their own. The average Joes are doing exactly what they need to do to keep themselves in this match. Can they win it? I don't know because a very quick backdooring Fnatic could easily take down the Nexus. But they're definitely putting up a great, great fight, that is for sure. AD Soraka now, most likely working towards that second Phantom Dancer. I see a Chain Vest in the hands of Jack, so that's going to be working towards a Guardian Angel. I'm going to try to stick to wherever I think the kills are going to come from. I need to be very careful here because there are people everywhere. Crescendo is available for Sona. Are they going to use it just on Vigar? That's the real question. Faraz throws out that Arcane okay, no Pulse. The average Joes, they're forced back into their base. Fokker with that GA up. He's going to jump onto thing. They may have managed to jump onto and rated. Counter Strike is up. That's going to stun and rated. He's going to be the first one to fall, but they've got to be careful because that's an incredibly tanky Vigar. That's Tankar. Fokker is now forced back from Soaz's Warwick in the bottom lane. HXD and Cyanide just forcing down the inhibitor. 
to go as still has crescendo available please keep that in mind crescendo is still there for use cyanide is now chasing are they going to use a crescendo actually goes out it does manage to hold cyanide in place i don't even know where to look because there's so much happening becker is just focusing the tower he does not care about champions they want to push the nexus down Fnatic have decided to ignore the average joes they picked up one more turret for their trouble every single lane is spawning super minions every single lane is pushing double super creeps into it and see this wave is the one that's coming two super creeps there two super creeps there two super creeps there and the average joes cannot get anywhere right now 55 18 we've got a ga trinity force Ezreal 7 2 22 but the man of the moment 22 3 15 being played by AFOP. Ferraris has landed some amazing stuns on the way out, running away to safety. And Icematics has managed to land in a good number of Crescent Strikes into those Lunar Rushes, but unfortunately, the Limelight has just been stolen, really. Tagoma has got some great crescendos, and with this in uh, inhibitor up, the next wave of Super Creeps is only going to spawn singles. Event Horizon is down, and Enraged's got to be very careful, because if he eats a stun or a slow, he's most likely going to go down. Soul Shroud has been completed by Warwick. Mana regen plus cooldown reduction for everybody. That's definitely going to help. 8,800 gold for Peke. His second Phantom Dancer is almost completed. 2.15.6. 2.15.6 is uh, where the numbers are right now. Definitely the lead feeder as far as Fnatic go. I owe HXD an apology as he's died the least. After me ragging him and saying how... You know, he's the manager, not a player. He's actually doing the least bad out of Fnatic, if I can use that term. And once again, just mad, mad props to Game for Glory. Thank you so much for hosting us, for setting this up. So as he's now going to be jumping in a little bit of trouble, he's taking a lot of damage. AFOB is going to carry on chasing. Chumba Waters are down, and look at the knockup from Chumba Waters and Cyclone. Warwick is down, immediately going to follow by HXD. Now they've turned their attention to Sinai. That's a double kill from Zerath. Peck is going to be the next to fall. If they can get a slow on Arcano Pulse, it may spin into their favor. With so many super creeps in the base, they cannot afford to push. This is the time the Fnatic has bought themselves a flash from Sona over the wall. That's very aggressive. Sona's not going to be able to take out an AD Soraka. No matter how she's built, Fokker is going to use that uh, Arcane Shift to get over the Event Horizon, so I really like that. Leaf Strike, Counter Attack, that's going to hold him in place. Look at the damage that's N rated. Keep in mind that's our Warmog's Thorn Mail N rated. He's going to give away yet another life, and Peke is now the next member. Ooh, good damage there from Ferraris. Blind poke through the wall. Athene's Unholy Grail, plus the uh, Rhylai's Crystal Scepter. But what sort of vision do they have? Uh, this is the vision of the average Joes right now. Average Joes, of course, is a team that has been put together from GameForGlory.net. The only way to play against Fnatic is, of course, you have registered on that portal and signed up for some of the pro player events. And this is the second batch of five. Let's flick over to the Fnatic view. Fnatic can see members. There were some pings down on Baron. And they find themselves 5,000 gold behind. GA has been completed for Ezreal for a while. GA in the hands of Jax. And we see Diana's working towards a GA of her own. She's about 1,100 gold behind. All those GAs, maybe. GAs and inhibitors they can push. GAs and inhibitors, maybe they can push. But for the, if they don't have inhibitors up, if they don't have inhibitors available, they simply do not have the ability to leave their base. What they're going to have to do is most likely leave somebody like a Diana or maybe even an Ezreal behind to farm up the super creeps, leave them to defend the base and allow Jax and Ezreal, you know, uh, the two pretty good pushers to shove down a lane. AFOP is not going to commit to this fight. HXD is over committed somewhere he really shouldn't. Chum the waters goes out, going to carry on chasing. Leap, plus power. that's one. Now he's turned his attention to and rated. Realizes that he shouldn't pick that fight because the rest of his team, oh, my mouse is now dead. Do not do this to me now. We're going to focus back up there. There's the Crescent Strike. Lunar, Lunar Rush is going to go forward. So is this the next target. But a Teleport has come out from Enrated. Event Horizon goes down. That's going to slow up a whole bunch of people. But Jax is yeah, he is in the party. 
We're going to stick with him as best as we can. Ismatix has picked up one. Soez is still alive. He was the focus of the previous engagement. But Diana, she's going to be so, so low. Cyanide has jumped in from very low. True shot barrage. That's going to go north. It's not going to be enough to pick up a kill onto Soez. And Ismatix is going to carry on chasing. Finally going down himself. That was a Guardian Angel proc. Soez is the man where all this fight started. He was alive right at the beginning. Still alive. His healing ability is immense. With that Riggle's Lantern as well as his passive. It ends up being a 4 for 4 exchange, but with two inhibitors down, Fnatic once again hold the line. Fnatic once again keep themselves in a position where they can, you know, they can do sort of what they like because the average Joes cannot leave their base. Super creeps in the top lane, super creeps in the middle lane. But look what it's doing for their farm. Ezreal, Diana, and Jax, all of whom reaching the 200 or just above the 200 mark, they are doing really, really well at holding. Oh, the rates make a weird noise sometimes. But yeah, 64 to 21 kills. And I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not looking at... Uh, um, if you are not spreading the word, letting everybody know that this game is happening, that we have a super ultra troll fanatic technically being held off. They are being held off, albeit it is a weird composition. Nonetheless, still counts. DFG completed as well as a needlessly large rod in the hands of Vygar. So he's finally got some AP. He's also sold that, that uh, thorn mail, which is very, very important, right? No thorn mail in hand means that Jackson Ezreal should be able to beat on him all day long. There's only one tower remaining for the members of the average Joes. Keep in mind that this is not actually a team, ladies and gentlemen. This is five members who registered accounts on Game for Glory. Oh, look at this. There comes the leap strike. Counter strike. Pekka is just going to get deleted. Has used Wish. Has used Astral Blessing. Continues to fight. Is going to be forced down. Now Cyanide is the next one. It's going to be focused. AFOB is going to continue chasing after the decoy. Chumma Waters goes down. He gets the stun off onto Cyanide and there's just not enough damage. Going to carry on chasing. Cyanide may throw out the Cyclone and he does. But once again, it's not going to be enough. We're going to continue following AFOB as now he turns his attentions over to HXD. Ghost has been propped. Okay, no pulse. Stun. Counter strike. Stun. That's HXD dead. No, he uses Plateful Trickster jumps away. Arcane Impulse at max range isn't going to be enough, but a Leaf Strike plus one more attack from Jax is going to close it out. So as is miles away from safety, has decided to chase, but there's just not going to be enough. Crescendo was actually blown. Not sure that was necessary. Not with five members there. But with the Super Creeps and the uh, Promoted Creep, they're going to carry on chasing there. And I'll tell you something now. AFOB is going to be rocking out this screenshot for many, many years to come. And you know what? Look at the rest of the team. 8, 4, 41 into Goa Sonia. Fokker, 7, 2, 30. Ferraris playing Zerath, 12, 7, 25. And unfortunately, I haven't given much love to Icematics, but dude, you deserve it. 11, 5, 16 on your Diana. You deserve all the props for how you've been playing. The times you have jumped in, they have been smart, they have been calculated. You have not overcommitted. And it's definitely, definitely well deserved. Have a look over at XPK. Double Phantom Dancer, Blasting Wand, and KG's Lucky Pick in hand. Frozen Heart has now been completed for Warwick. He's actually sold his Regal Lantern. Pick is going to stick into this fight and look at the damage onto Goa. Pick has taken a little bit. If he gets stunned, this may be the end of him. Is Ferraris going to opt to use any abilities though? True Shot Barrage comes out. It's not going to be enough. There's one Arcane Barrage. Is he going to carry on chasing? Second one does get juked. Compliments of all the movement speed from Pekka. He eats some mage chains for his trouble. The third one is going to get juked. We're going to jump to the bottom lane really, really quickly as Pekka is most likely going to go down. They've left Fokker to challenge Cyanide and I don't know if he can duel. We'll see if this is going to play out in his favor. One for one. Cyanide is just chunking him. Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, and Phantom Dancer is too strong. But can he you know, survive against the additional tower? That's the question. AFOB has now jumped in. A flash from Fokker. He's going to get to safety, so it saves his life. But is it going to be enough? That is the question. Once again, these Super Creeps are just keeping the average Joes back. The Super Creeps are preventing the average Joes from going anywhere. A beautiful event horizon from Enrated. Follows up by a Dark Matter. Inhibitor is now down, so once again, more Super Creeps being spawned. Soaz is committed. He just wants to put as much damage as he can onto those towers. Well, why is my mouse freaking out with me today? HXD is going to be trying to get to safety. Once again, that Arcane Barrage is active and available. The cooldown is very, very low. Dago is going to carry on chasing, but Playful Trickster is going to give HXD all the space that he needs to get away. 
And we need to look at these gold graphs. This is a 38-minute game. This is a 38-minute game. And you know what? The longer this goes, the less likely Fnatic are of winning. Ezreal's about to hit a point where he's going to be completely unstoppable. He has two Dorn's Blades which can be sold. You know, replaced for the likes of a Infinity Edge and who knows a Warmog, something for some more survivability. Jax is incredibly, incredibly difficult to kill right now. And the moment that these inhibitors up, unless Fnatic backdoor, they, they, you know, they're going to get pushed down. The average Joes are going to be able to, you know, clear waves and clear towers very, very quickly. Diana, a lot of ability power, decent auto attack speed. Uh, Zerath and, uh, sorry, rather, Ezreal and Jax are also going to be able to chunk down towers very, very fast. AFOB is committed to a fight. Primarial bursts out. Now three members of Fnatic are chasing on him. He's thrown out the ghost. Doesn't want to waste his Guardian Angel. But now with uh, Peckett joining the party, this is four members of Fnatic chasing AFOB. That's four members. Counter-Strike is now going to go out. He manages to stun up a bunch. Turns attention to HXD. This is going to proc his Guardian Angel. It's not going to be enough. Oh, AFOB has overcommitted here. He did not anticipate that much damage. Now Fock is the next one that's going to be in trouble. Mist Essence flux out. He needs a Mystic Shot to land and apply a slow. It does actually land onto Fizz. Dark Knights are over the wall. With Jax down, Fnatic are going to be chasing. Look at this bottom lane. AFOB, unfortunately, has potentially cost them the game. Yes, Fnatic are in fact going to backdoor for the victory. Fnatic raid call with a 40-minute win. 32-4-18 Jax, 8-4-44 Sona, 7-2-32 Ezreal, 13-8-25 Zerath, and 11-5-17 Diana. Fnatic, Fnatic were sweating. Fnatic were sweating, ladies and gentlemen. That is 100% sure. Check out the scores at the end of this one. I do once again have to give huge, huge props to everybody that took part here. Fokker on Ezreal, Ferrarist on Zerath, AFOB on Jax, Degoa on Sona, and Icematics on Diana. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is game number two on our EU matches. There is still one more match coming your way. Still one more game to be played before we have a short break and Fnatic will return to face off against some US players later in the evening. But before we do, I'm going to put some music back on. And we'll jump into game three very, very shortly.